right guys so today we're going to see if we can get a few things fixed up on the car and test spool it so should be interesting to see if this uh, giant forced inductions gt55 88 millimeter turbo will uh, spool up on this little 4.8 um, i've got a few things to do before then uh, the coolant lines i ended up just looping them like this to uh, have some water in the motor while i wait for the radiator i had to order a new one so I have to wait for that uh, so we won't be able to go to the track until that shows up there's some few other issues as well whenever I did loop that I turned the pump on and turns out that it's leaking out of the rear steam ports so uh, it's possible the o-rings are bad or not in there or something so I'm gonna pull that out and check that out so I've got to pull the intake off I've already started on that um, I need to run co2 lines to the top of the gates and to the boost control solenoids and I also need to plug this port right here on the side of the in or the side of the throttle body so that just needs to be tapped and then I need to get a plug and put in that so the transmission is still dripping out of the pan a little bit um, the pan gasket but I'm going to actually leave that for now because it's not a serious issue um, and I don't want to fix the pan gasket and then test spool it and figure out that I need to pull the transmission out for some reason so we're gonna just leave that as it is for now I did get the switch panel wired up uh, I need to get it mounted but um, it works so that's good news all right guys I got impatient and didn't end up showing you any of the work that I did and also this is like a five minute bass tune thrown together so go easy on me but this is the first spool attempt Alright guys, I'm just sitting here looking over the uh, data log. Um, I have been for quite a while now. Um, but everything looks good. I'm super happy with it, even though that was uh, not the best attempt there. It was sitting there stumbling for a while in the beginning. It was just super lean. I uh, just need to make uh, quite a few tune changes, but for the first time trying anything like that, I'm super happy. And it, it got up to the two-step RPM, which I had the two-step at 4,400 RPM. And also um, another thing that will cause it to spool really slow and um, or th that's going to help a lot whenever I get it figured out is uh, dome pressure. So right there that was just on gate pressure. So I didn't have any dome pressure so that's no CO2 on top of the gates. Um, I tested it before and it worked two or three times and then all of a sudden it stopped working even though the add solenoid was still pulsing. So I'm not sure if the solenoid just, uh, I got a bad solenoid maybe, or maybe uh, there's just something going on with it. Maybe it's got some junk in it or something. So I need to mess with that and get that figured out. But once I add some dome pressure on this thing, it is going to spool much faster. And also once I get, once I get the tune figured out. So there in the beginning, uh, whenever it was stumbling, it was uh, super lean. It was um, like seven to one or whatever, like six, seven to one, just missing stumbling real bad um and i also need to change my target afr a little bit uh, part of why it got thrown off is because of uh, my altitude so i set it for whenever it got to uh, like zero psi um for it to start richening up and i forgot about the fact that i live in really uh or fairly high altitude so the barometric pressure here is like 86 kpa which um if you do it by kpa instead of psi that's under zero psi so it was still commanding uh like 60 air fuel which is what i want at idle not whenever i'm starting to get into it i wanted it to be like 5045 or so uh where i was uh getting into it there so that's one issue and then uh just getting the fuel map dialed in is going to be a big help there as well but I'm super happy with it and that was also just on the base um, I just used my same timing map that I had from before so I imagine it's probably going to want some more timing and I have a few different ways that I can mess with it to 
help that spool out and I'm probably going to do that and uh, shoot it again before the end of this video just so we get a little better attempt than that. I'm at least going to uh, get the fueling fixed up. Uh, we'll see if I can get the dome pressure issue fixed. And also you um, seen there it climbed, it hit the two step and then it kind of fell off and then came back. That was the dump valves opening, or that was the dump valves closing, sorry. So I had them open and I wanted to make sure that they would close and that it would act like it's supposed to. It would tighten up the converter. So uh, originally I was going to have them open at a little bit higher boost, but whenever I figured out that my dome pressure wasn't working, I went ahead and uh, turned down the boost from where they closed. So I had them close at like 2 to 3 psi. So once it got up, it hit the two-step, and then right when it hit the two-step is about when it hit that boost mark, and it closed the dumps, and that dra that drug it back down, and then it um, the good thing is that it was able to climb back up to the two-step without the dump valves open. So in order to be able to get to a 4,400 RPM two-step with no dump valves open, with only four pounds of boost, with the gates just wide open, that is uh, awesome. I'm super happy with that. That's not going to be an issue at all. So, um, you know, all those things combined with going to lower altitude is going to make this thing have no issue spooling, and I'm not worried about it at all. And I think the uh, converter is going to work really well too, and I'm super excited for it. And I'm happy to see the dump valves are working and everything's looking really good. So. Also, another thing, I uh, just had the coolant lines looped, as I said, and it actually held, it took a while for the engine to heat up, and it didn't get hot at all after just letting it run for a while and backing it back into the garage. I think it was running for a total of like five minutes or so, and it took, you know, most of that time to even get up to uh, 140 degrees, which is where I decided to start, you know, test spooling it. And then by the time like I backed into the garage, maybe a couple minutes later, it was still only like 180 degrees and I wasn't idling it rich or anything either. So if I end up having to wait too long for a radiator, I may honestly just take it to the track with the lines looped and just run it like that because I think it would be no problem. So lots of good news. I'm super happy. Um, need to just get the rest of the stuff wrapped up, get this thing aligned. Um, and then we'll be good to go. We'll be good to take it to the track. So, super excited. I can't wait to uh, see what this thing's going to do. And Yeah, I'll uh, get a few of these things fixed and uh, spool it up another time and see how much better we can make it. Alright guys, so I did some testing here and it turns out that I got a bad Mac valve, unfortunately. So, uh, as you can see here, boost fill is at 100%. And um, you do see there's some dome pressure on it. That's because I just bypassed it to uh, test this because this thing's going to be a turd with no dome pressure. So I want to uh, try and get it up on the brake at least with some, some dome pressure on it. See if we can make some, some good boost and uh, see if I have the tune a little bit more figured out. And also I want to use the uh, two-step offset and um, move the dumps around so they can shut off at a higher boost so we can get this thing to make boosts quicker. Um, but anyways, I'll show you what I did for now. So I just hooked the regulator up. I put a, just a T here that goes straight to the wastegates, straight to the top of the wastegates. And then down here, I just have it going to what would be the outlet from these. So you can see this blue one right here is where I had CO2 going into. And yeah, this solenoid right here is getting 100% duty cycle right now. So if it was functioning, it would be letting all of that dome pressure out right here, but it's not. And I uh, tested it and it's getting power and uh, ground and it's just not, not working. So I just got a bad mag valve. It worked like three times and that's it. So that sucks, but I'll just have to replace that. But you know, this will work for now to test it. So yeah, I have it going down there and it tees off, comes around here and goes on to uh, the top of the wastegates. So. We'll uh, test that out and see how this thing spools up with some dome pressure and with some uh, tune corrections. Alright guys, I just wanted to show you how I have the uh, dump valve set up. I do have a V6 and it does have the built-in dump valve um, like controller. I don't have that on here right now. don't have the transmission deal on here. But it didn't do what I wanted it to do. I couldn't use them as a 
spool assist valve as it calls um, and also use them on the pass like I wanted to so I made my own table um, the way with the V6 it just you can use a spool assist valve which will shut off at a set amount of boost but you can't put it on the same output as the dump valve that you can you know pulse width modulate through the pass so there was no way to make that work the way that I wanted it to so I was able to do it this way and I can just pulse width modulate it whenever I want to and you can see I set it up by boost and boost time so 0, 0.00 of course is going to be when it's on the trans brake so right now I have the uh, let's see this is the internal dump I have it 100% open until three pounds of boost and then as you can see it fades down until it's fully closed at seven pounds of boost so honestly this is just guessing at this point to see you know what it's going to do um, I believe I closed the external one at like 4 psi just 100% to 0% so this is all just guessing right now until I uh, you know get some more data and figure out what it's going to like but the way that I have it set up now if uh, for example I wanted to have it open in the beginning of the pass and close by let's say one and a half seconds so I can put 100% here so at 0 0.01 it's going to be 100% open and then let's see 1.25 that's where it's going to be closed so I can just come over here fill row values and there we go now it's going to just be open right off the start and then um, slowly close itself so this way I can do whatever I want with it I can close it at a certain boost on the two steps so that way it's not open the whole time on the trans brake and then I can still uh, you know open it on the pass and slowly close it or whatever I want to do so this gives me the most control so I'm happy with how this uh, turned out but it's just going to take some time tuning it but anyways let's uh, try this out and see if we can make some more boost and see if we can make it a little bit quicker and not have any uh, lean pops there in the beginning so pull this thing out and try it out before it uh, rains on me A very large turbo but uh this thing has no problem spooling it thanks to that uh good hughes performance converter and hughes dump valves and a uh, little bit of methanol so i'm super excited about that it's going to spool way faster at good altitude this is in over 7,000 da so yeah super happy with that all right guys got this thing pulled back in the garage and as you can see i just beat the rain so uh <laughs> that was close but we're good um but anyways as you can see there from the data overlay, made 13 pounds of boost right there at the end. Super happy with that. That was uh, 10 pounds of dome pressure on it, so uh, nothing too crazy at all. And that was also only, uh, I say only, but only 4,400 RPM. Um, the reason I say only is because with the old combo, um, I left, or on the last time that I set the record, I left at 4,700 RPM. So uh, there's still quite a bit there in RPM and also, uh, I dropped the two-step. I had it come up like 600 RPM over, so it would have gone to 5,000, and then I had it drop down to 4,400. I had it drop down at six pounds, um, just because I wasn't sure how much boost it was going to make and didn't want it to get stuck up there. But with it making 13 pounds, I could definitely uh, improve the spool time there by raising that uh, RPM longer. You know, raise it until probably 10 or 11 pounds, and then drop it down. That way, it would build uh, much faster. But the biggest thing right now is just the time from like 0 to 3 PSI. That's where it's kind of lazy. Um, I meant to add a bunch of timing there and I forgot to. Um, so it's still got the same timing map that I had on it on E85 with the old combo that I really didn't have an issue spooling. It's raining pretty hard on us now. But um, I think it could take a, quite a bit more timing there. So I think there's uh, quite a bit of room for improvement there and also cleaning up the fuel map and all that. But I'm still super happy with it. It's going to be uh, no problem running this combo. So and we'll uh, end it off there for now. Uh, we'll uh, keep on working on this thing, get a new Mac valve, get that replaced, and uh, just go over everything and get this thing track ready. And hopefully we will be headed to the track soon.